Hello, Beyond Church. It is so good to be with you today. It's been about three years since I've been at the Cessnock location, and so much has happened since then. There's now Scone. There's, of course, online. Hello, everyone online. And there's Toronto. Hello, Toronto. I've always wanted to come back and preach at Toronto. It holds a very special place in my heart. So hello, Chris. Hello, Norm. I hope you guys and everyone else is going well. I want to give a, a special shout out to your amazing pastors, Pastor Luke and Pastor Rachel, who are wonderful friends of m- mine and my family. And uh, we love your pastors. They are first class. They are world class, as you already know. Well, a bit's happened in the last three years since I've been up there. And uh, we are now uh, living in the most locked down state in the world, Victoria. And we're having a ball. Maya, Beck and myself are, are going great guns. And we're pastoring in an amazing church called Riviera CC in Gippsland, a multi-site church, and we're doing some amazing things. Of course, COVID's hit, and that's been a season, hasn't it? We've also seen bushfires down here as well, but what an opportunity it's been to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Well, I'm particularly excited to preach today because I love your theme, Dare to Believe. Now, I'm daring to believe today that God has so much for you as we step out, as we believe and and are excited for 2022. I believe something will shift in the spiritual realm. I believe that God is open to doing miracles if we have faith for those miracles. And I believe that there is so much more for us and our families if we dare to believe. So God, I thank you for the privilege of bringing your word. Lord, I just ask that you use a a mere human vessel to to convey your heart and and strategies and theology today, Lord. And I ask for open hearts to receive today in Jesus' name. And everybody online and in person said, Amen. Amen. Well, the title of my message is Mountains and Mulberry Bushes. Mountains and Mulberry Bushes with a subtitle of Do You Dare to Believe? Come with me to Luke chapter 17. And it says this, and it says, And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith. Jesus has just taught about offence and forgiveness. And so the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now come with me to Matthew 17, 19 to 20. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out, being casting out a demon? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing, hear that, nothing will be impossible for you. What I see in this passage are are two things that stand out to me today. The first is this, that we have the ability to have our faith Increased. That's the first thing. The second thing I see is this, that our faith, as small as a mustard seed, can see mountains and mulberry bushes moved if we dare to believe. You might be wondering, well, what's all this about mulberry bushes? What's all this about mountains? And good question. You know what? When I think about mountains, yes, sure, hard to, hard to move. But when I think about mulberry bushes, what is it? Well, if you think a Jewish rabbi and Jesus being a Jewish rabbi, they believed during this time that the mulberry bush root system would go down so deep and would be so um, significant that it would last for about 600 years, pretty much deeming it to be unuprootable, if that's a word. And so that's what their thought pattern, that's the context of this scripture. And so when we think about mulberry bushes, maybe a mulberry bush root system is, is something that's deep rooted in our lives. Maybe it's a, a, a generational challenge that we uh, can't face. Maybe it's a, a, a challenge that we seem that's, that no one else sees. It's sin, it's shame, it's a way of doing things that nobody else knows about, but it's been around forever. That's what mulberry bushes represent. Now, mountains, of course, mountains represent the impossible. Maybe it's that diagnosis. Maybe it's that breakthrough you've been waiting for. This is what these things represent. And Jesus, Jesus is suggesting that with faith, even the smallest amount of faith, that nothing is impossible for our God. No disease is too great. No spouse too far away. No heart too hard for Jesus. Nothing is impossible. Now, I need to speak to somebody today. Somebody needs to catch this today because, friend, you're a cycle breaker. 
You're a cycle breaker for your life and the life of your family because you've got faith that God can move mountains and mulberry bushes. Those mulberry bushes could be dysfunctional behavior. Those mulberry bushes, they could be unhealthy coping mechanisms. They could be past hurts and, uh, and a history in your family. Those deep, deep roots, friend, I've got to encourage you, are nothing for our God. Those mountains will move in the name of Jesus. Can someone say amen? And my friend, you will see breakthrough in 2022 if you dare to believe. Oh, God is good. In Luke 17, which we read a moment earlier, The Greek word that Jesus uses for faith is the verb pistis, pistis. Now the noun for that word is believe. And there's many descriptions based around what this word means. It means belief, trust, understanding. But one of the Bible dictionary descriptions that I really love for that word pistis is this. Trusting the character of the one who can be relied on. I love that. I love that because I rely on Jesus. A friend, I know that without Jesus, I can do nothing. Well, I can do lots of things, in fact, but I can't do anything of value. I can't do anything good without Jesus. But I trust in the character of Jesus because Jesus can be relied on. How do I know this? Because like what Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Like the book of Malachi instructs us to do, I've tested him, I've seen him, I've seen him move, I've trusted him and I've never been let down. I've believed in his character and his character always shines through. I wonder, friend, do you know him? Do you know him? I don't mean do you know about him? But do you know him? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because the key to knowing him, the key to knowing our Savior is faith. Our faith, our ability to dare to believe. It's no wonder the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith. They wanted to know Jesus more. It's like the father of the demon-possessed boy that we see in Mark chapter 9. The story goes, verse 21, it says, So he being Jesus, so Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him into both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe all things, all things, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. God, help me have faith. Increase my faith, Lord. Help me believe I'm desperate, Lord. My son's going through this. I need you as healer. I need you as restorer. I need you as deliverer. I need you as king. I need you as the ultimate authority in this world, Lord. Help my unbelief. You see... We as Christians, we can believe, but do we have faith for ourselves? That God is for us, for you, friend. Not the person next to you. Not the person who's in front of you. That God is for you. We must come with this revelation that you know what? We're children of God. That we're citizens of heaven. That every promise in the Bible is a promise for us, not just for Shannon, not just for Pastor Rachel, not just for Pastor Luke, not for the super Christians, not for just for the, the tele evangelists. No, that Jesus is for you and he's for me. And this is why faith, faith in essence, is trust. You believe God can do anything, but you don't trust that God will do it for you. You've been hurt before, and it's painful to trust again. Your trust has been broken, and it's hard to let your heart go there again. You've asked questions like, where was God when that terrible thing happened to me? How can you trust again? 
Well, friend, I'm here to tell you that God is running after you like the hound of heaven. He is chasing you down. He is imploring you to trust again. He's urging you to love again. He's stirring you to have faith again. Oh, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. And so what I have here for you today, church, is three easy ways to increase your faith. Now, don't let the simplicity of this negate the challenge for you today. Are you ready for the first one? Give me a shout out online if you're ready. Number one, position yourself to catch faith. To catch faith. What do we mean by that? I mean, get around people who have more faith than you. Get around people like Pastor Luke, Pastor to Rachel. I've got some great friends and some of you may know them. Great friends, Blessing and Florence. Every time I get around these guys, Every time I rub shoulders with them or have conversations with them, I come back with more faith. I rub shoulders and we have more faith. I leave the conversation with more faith. It's interesting who you hang around with rubs off on you because the opposite is true too. You have someone who wants to bring everything down, lack of faith, well, that'll rub off on you as well. My grandfather, he was a policeman in the CIB and uh, he had a, a sign on his garage that said this. It said, it's hard to soar with eagles when you work with turkeys. Now, hey, I'm not saying I work with turkeys. Please hear my heart here. That's not what I'm saying. But what it says is, hey, those you rub shoulders with will either lift you up or they'll bring you down. And it's the same with church life too. That's why it's important to get around church, to get into church on a Sunday, to be part of midweek groups and courses, to be part of a team serving Jesus together because you get around people with faith and it rubs off on you, friend. It rubs off on you. Something I tell our church is this, You show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future, because you know what? You can catch faith. Another way to catch faith is simply by God's Word. Romans 10, 17 says this. It says, So then faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Friend, I've got to tell you that the Bible is God's Word. If you want to dare to believe for miracles in 2022, then the Bible is the water that waters the mustard seed of faith. King David sums it up when he talks about catching faith in in Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. He says this, he says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's in God's Word. It's in the Bible. It's in the Scriptures. And it goes on to say, and His law, He meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever He does, whatever she does, shall prosper. Friend, if you want to increase your faith, then you need to position yourself to catch faith. Number two, number two, how you going there, Toronto? How you going there, Cessnock and Scone? Number two is this, stir yourself to trust faith. It's interesting because it's challenging this one. You can't trust God in areas of faith until you trust God in areas of faith. I know that, I'll explain that in just a moment. Hebrews 11 verse six says, but without faith, It is impossible to please Him being God. The context of of Luke 17 that we read earlier is in relation to having faith to forgive an offence. I wonder, friend, would you have enough faith to let God deal with an offence rather than carrying it around? We mentioned it earlier, but faith is trust. Do you trust God to act on your behalf? Because you can't trust God with your future unless you commit your future to God. You can't trust God with your finances unless you follow His instruction when it comes to your finances. You can't trust God with your relationships unless you're honouring God in your relationships. This is why you need to stir yourself to trust faith. Because for some, for some it's a challenge. I'm not sure what your work environment was like, but many years ago I worked in a creative studio. And we had these training days. Oh, I love the training days. Do you remember the training days? The training days where you take a day out of work to do some training. 
<coughs> for me, it was, I used to love them. But you know why? Because you used to get lunch provided. And I remember as a young man, I would make the most of those lunches. They'd bring out the trays of sandwiches and, you know, the points of sandwiches. Well, I remember eating 22 points once. It was a great day. I was a, I was a younger man then. The metabolism was a bit faster back then. I probably couldn't do it now. But anyway, I digress. A training day. Anyway, we went to this one training day. And I was part of this creative studio. And our bosses thought, you know what? If they trust each other more, then they'll be more creative. They'll be more collaborative. And so they got us into these trust games. And you've probably seen these before. The game where you've got six people and one of them standing there and the other five are going to catch them. And you close your eyes and just lean back and fall back and they catch you. Well, they're meant to catch you. And that's for sure. Well, friend, I've got to tell you, just like that, game where you have to do something, you have to actually trust, you have to actually fall back. I need to tell you that you need to move for God to move. That faith is the currency of heaven and God wants you to trust Him in all areas of your life, but He won't force Himself upon you. He's actually a gentleman. He's waiting for you to move. Here's the thing though, friend. Here's the thing about God. He won't drop you. He won't let you down. Where others have disappointed you and hurt you, God won't do that. Where others have misplaced your trust, God will only grow your trust. Where others have abused your trust, God honours it and reveres it. God will not drop you, friend. You can put your trust in Him. He will never let you down. But here's the thing. It's your move. You must move first. Stir yourself to trust faith. And number three, last but not least, is this. Number three is compel yourself to use faith. I simply mean this. Use what faith you've got. Whether it's small or large, don't waste it. Just use it. Faith, you see, is like a muscle. The more you use it, the more you grow. Now, I've recently got back into the gym. See, for lockdown down here and restrictions over the last 18 months, gyms have been closed and, and so my muscle has just sort of d- drifted away. But in the last four weeks, I've been back in the gym, as you can tell, as you can tell. And so I've been in the gym using my small muscles and they've been growing into these 36-inch killer pythons right here. And so they've been growing because I've been using them. And you know what? Even my small muscles I've used and it's hurt and it's been painful and it's been stretched. And this is like our faith. You've got to use what you have and watch it grow. Watch it grow. You may only have faith the size of a mustard seed and you can see mountains and mulberry bushes move in Jesus' name, but you must use your faith. You must use your faith. What does that look like to you for some? as simply letting go of that offence and trusting that God will deal with it. For others, it's praying bolder prayers and believing God for the miraculous. For others still, it's, it's taking a risk and, and taking your family on the adventure. What is it for you, friend? What does using your faith look like for you? So as I bring this to a close today, if you want to increase your faith, position yourself to catch faith, Stir yourself to trust faith and compel yourself to use faith. You know what? I, I actually think there's no greater faith than that of salvation faith. That of, of asking Jesus into your life and trusting that He has died on a cross 2,000 years ago, was resurrected again, given life, and now He's defeated death and defeated the power that death has over us. And to trust that To believe that with all your heart, there is nothing greater. And so I don't know where you're at with Jesus today, friend, but I would love to pray for you right where you are. If you're uh, in person today in services or you're online today, I want to include you in on this prayer, but I need you to do something. I need an, an, an outward demonstration of that internal revelation. And so for some, if you're online today, there's going to be a button that pops up and you can click that button saying, you know what, Shannon, pray for me. 
Pray for me. I want to know this Jesus. If you're in person today, I want to get you to put your hand up in just a moment. But I've got to tell you, friend, this is the beauty of our God, Jesus Christ. He brings forgiveness of our past mistakes, the things we've done wrong, said wrong, the thought wrong, the sin, the shame that we wish we could just take back. He brings forgiveness for that, and He brings a peace and a comfort for the storm that's going on in our life right now. And even still, He gives us a hope and a purpose for our future. That's my God. That's Jesus, and I'd love to introduce you to Him. If you're in the room right now at Cessnock, at Toronto, at Scone, and that's you, you want me to pray for you, why don't you just put your hand up and put it back down again, and I'll include you in on this prayer. And if you're online, why don't you just click that button right now. And if that's you today, maybe you're coming back to Jesus. You've been away from Him for a while. I want to include you in a prayer as well. Just do the same thing. And if that's you today, can I encourage you, just follow this prayer with me and pray it out of the sincerity of your own heart. God, I just thank you for your son, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, that you defeated death and defeated the power that death has over us, that we can be forgiven of sin, God. And so right now I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. Forgive me of my past mistakes, Lord, and be my Lord and Savior. Today, Jesus, I choose you. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me a hope for the future. In your name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, something else I want to do right now is I feel like I can't preach a message on daring to believe, on having faith without giving you an opportunity to respond. Friend, I don't know what your years looked like. It might have been tough. It might have been great. But I do know the best is yet to come. And so today, I want, to play, I want to pray for your 2022, your year coming up. If you need a breakthrough, maybe it's healing in your body. Maybe it's miraculous provision. Maybe it's a restoration of relationships right now. Just feel right now for someone that's a child coming back to Jesus. I'm going to believe with you and join my faith with your faith today. I'm going to believe for the miraculous right now. For it to happen right now, not just for 2022, but for right now. I also felt for a family, there's a family, and God's stirring you to go on the adventure of faith. And for the parents of this family, it's stepping out. I feel like there's a ministry calling on somebody today, and it's a stepping out of faith. Firstly, I want to tell you, God's got your back. And that God is for you. He's not against you. He wouldn't lead you somewhere where He's not going to provide for you or look after you. But I also want you to hear this challenge. Do it for your kids. Do it for your kids. Do it for your kids. Show them what it means to walk by faith. Give them the example. Go on the adventure of faith. And so right now, I'm going to pray for you. If that's you today, you don't need to uh, respond at all to this, but just simply receive this prayer. And believe, join your faith with my faith today. God, all of us could have our faith increase, Lord. And so we ask you in the goodness, through the goodness of who you are, to increase our faith, Lord. Give us the courage and the boldness to step out in faith, God. When it comes to doing something that's beyond our comprehension, Lord, when it comes to responding to the small whisper of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray for the boldness to follow your direction. We pray, Lord, for testimonies to come this week and also in our year coming in 2022, God, of your faithfulness, of your breakthrough, of your healing, of your, of your goodness, God, of, of relationships being restored. God, we dare to believe. We stand firm in faith, God, declaring the promises of the Bible are for us. And so we thank you, God, and ask for you to move in our situation, just right where you are. Why don't you picture your situation right now? Just take a moment. Picture your situation. God, whatever people are, are picturing right now, Lord, I ask that you move in their situation, God. Move in their lives, move in their families, move in their homes, in their workplaces, their, their businesses, God. Respond to this faith, God, because we believe your word that says faith as small as a mustard seed 
can see mountains and mulberry bushes moved in Jesus' name. And we claim that promise for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So wonderful to be with you beyond church. I love you. Uh, Our heart to yours. God bless you and have a great Christmas.